What's going on guys? So today we're going to talk about some things you might be surprised that you cannot actually do while you're at basic training. So just the other day I posted a video talking about the day before basic training and how nerve wracking and stuff that would be. And a lot of you, well really not you, are leaving for basic training today and there's going to be a lot of you leaving either tomorrow or next week or so. So I thought it might be a neat idea to talk about some of the things that you might be surprised that you can't do whenever you get to basic training because a few of these really caught me off guard and one of them in particular that I'm going to talk about really kind of screwed over my platoon for several weeks. But before I get started, I just want to thank my newest Patreon supporter in the first sergeant tier, Reed Byford. Uh, you guys have been ridiculously supportive and I, and I literally can't thank you all enough. Like this has literally blown me away with all the support that you guys are giving me. And another thing I want to mention is I have this over here in the background. This is something that was sent to me by Battleground Cigars. He's one of my Patreon supporters. You don't have to be a Patreon supporter to send me something. But if you guys want to send me any of your unit patches, so if you're either in the military right now and you have a unit patch or you have an extra one that you want to send me, go ahead and do that and I will put it right here. Also, for those of you who are going to basic training in the IT, feel free, once you get done with your training and you get to your actual unit, to just hit me up on my PO box, which link is in the description or the address is in the description, and send me your unit patches. Now, the first thing that you might be surprised that you cannot actually do whenever you get to basic training is sitting on your bunks in the barracks. Now, everything I'm gonna talk about in this video is definitely just my experience. Some things might vary. This one, I don't think is going to vary. I don't believe I've ever heard that anybody's been able to sit on their bunks in the barracks throughout the day. The only time that you can be on your bunk is when you're sleeping, right? So the i think it was the first day or the second day of basic training in the morning one day somebody sat on their bunk so we, we woke up in the morning and you know was, i don't know 15 minutes or something goes by and somebody was sitting on their bunk to put on their boots and drill sergeant walked in that person sit on their bunk and it screwed over the whole freaking platoon and what happened was because of that the punishment for somebody sitting on their bunk is we had to do a hundred percent fire guard every night for the foreseeable future and it lasted about four weeks or so and what 100 percent fire guard means is i made a video on fire guards so if you don't know what that is you should check that out but what that means is every single person in the platoon has to do at least an hour of fire guard every single night and what normally happens is uh, for fire guard is people cycle through so you might only have to do fire guard every one to four days so having 100 percent fire guard meant everybody lost an hour of sleep every single night for four weeks uh, ish uh, just because somebody sat on their bunk. So that's something really surprising that you're not gonna be able to do. The other thing that kind of correlates with this is sitting on anything in general. At the beginning of basic training, for us, we didn't get to sit on bleachers, we didn't get to sit on really anything. We had to sit on the ground to eat our food, like it was ridiculous. So whenever you first get to basic training, it might be, this one might be a little bit different for you, but we, we're not allowed to sit on anything. It was just the ground. So when you're in the barracks, you're sitting on the floor. When you're outside, you're sitting on the floor. And that was something that really surprised me. The next surprising thing that you might think would be okay is actually being able to go somewhere and do PT on your own or with your battle buddies or with a group of people, right? So what I mean by that, going somewhere to do PT on your own, is when you're in the barracks, there's not really gonna be any weights. If you're lucky, if you're lucky, there might be a few kettlebells or something. For Some rare people might have a little bit more than that, but the vast majority of people are gonna have no weights whatsoever in their barracks. So if you're trying to get a workout in, there's really no way to do it in the barracks. And you might see around military posts and everything, there's gonna be pull-up bars, there's gonna be dip bars and stuff, there's gonna be tracks that you can run around. And when you're at basic training, at the beginning of basic training, you are not gonna be allowed to go outside and actually train on pull-up bars or anything like that. So some of you guys may have heard stories of me actually doing pull-ups in the bathroom. And that was one of the ways that I got exercise in whenever I was at basic training. So you're not gonna be allowed to go outside to go work out, you're not gonna be able to go down to the pull-up bars, you're not gonna be able to go down to the track, at least at the beginning of basic training, if you're lucky, later on on basic training, whenever the, I guess, rules get a little bit more relaxed, or you get a little bit more freedoms, 
uh, the drill sergeants might allow you to actually go down to the track maybe to get some extra running in maybe go down to the pull-up bars for a little bit with a battle buddy the next thing that could be surprising or not depending on your knowledge of the military in general is talking while you're eating when you're at basic training you're gonna have a very limited amount of time to eat right and so what's gonna happen is you're gonna have you know i would say less than five minutes less than five minutes on average to eat when you go through the defect to get your food the drill starts to be yelling at everybody to hurry up and when you sit down to eat your food you're not supposed to be talking to anybody. You're supposed to have your hand on your lap, the, the hand that's not using anything to eat. You're basically gonna be sitting at the position of attention, which is where your heels are together with your toes pointed outwards. If you're using both hands, technically both hands are supposed to be helping you eat food, so maybe if you make something into a sandwich. But while you're eating in the defect, you're not allowed to talk to anybody. If you get caught talking to people, you could get in trouble. Your whole platoon can get in trouble. It could be a bad day, so when you get into the defect when you go and you sit down you just got to scarf down your food get outside you know maybe get into your little platoon formation and then you can talk to people but while you're in the defect you're not allowed to talk to anybody and continuing on with the not allowed to talk topic when you're at basic training there's gonna be a plenty of times and scenarios and situations where you're gonna have nothing to do maybe you're at the range during white phase and you're gonna be sitting in the bleachers and you're not allowed to talk to anybody. You gotta be sitting there, you can't be relaxed, you're not supposed to be talking to anybody. Uh, sometimes you might be whispering around or something, but a lot of times there's gonna be situations when there's nothing to do, but yet the drill sergeants won't let you talk to anybody. You just gotta sit there and be quiet, sometimes for hours and hours and hours and just, just really not talk. Maybe if the drill sergeant goes away, everybody will talk a little bit, then the drill sergeant will come back and they hear everybody whispering and they're just like, you know, blah, 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 blah they yell at you or whatever but you know there's a lot of times at basic training when you're just not allowed to talk even though there's nothing to do so one of the things that you get accustomed to at basic training is having a battle buddy everywhere you go so one of the things that you might be surprised that you can't do is like go to the bathroom by yourself go anywhere at all period by yourself like there's really like no scenario maybe if you're getting up in the middle of the night to go to the bathroom uh, but during the day you're not, you're not gonna be going anywhere by yourself. You're gonna have your battle buddy with you everywhere you go. And like I said, it's one of those things where you get so accustomed to it, you know, just asking your battle buddy, which a battle buddy is literally just, you know, whoever, it's your friend. You could just replace battle buddy with your friend. Everywhere you go, you're gonna have to have your battle buddy with you. And once you get done with basic training, you gotta have a battle buddy with you as well at AIT, but the restriction on that may be a little bit more relaxed. But once you get done with AIT, it's a little weird. You're like, holy crap, like I can actually go somewhere by myself. Like this is the weirdest feeling. Maybe if you get the chance to go home on leave for a period of time, whether it's at basic training for block leave, or maybe it's during a holiday for AIT, when you go somewhere by yourself, it's just like, this is the weirdest thing ever because you get so accustomed to going everywhere with somebody because you're not allowed to go anywhere by yourself. And the last thing that's honestly a little bit surprising and a little hypocritical on like the army side of thing, and that is going to sleep when you want to. And what I mean by that is at the end of the day, when the due today is over, when you got nothing else to do except for waiting until it's time to go to sleep, you still can't go to sleep, right? So if your your bedtime or whatever that the time that the drill sergeants say to go to sleep is at 2100 and you're completely done with everything you got your laundry done you your the barracks are you know cleaned or cleaned uh and it's 20 hundred you got an hour until it's time for lights out you still can't go to sleep like even though there's if there's nothing to do you can't go to sleep and the reason that's a little bit hypocritical is throughout basic training throughout all these these training things you're gonna have people, some high up people like battalion commanders and stuff that'll be talking to you. And they'll be like, make sure you get plenty of sleep. Make sure if you have a few minutes to get sleep, take those five minutes to go to sleep, but you're never gonna get to do it. You cannot sleep whenever you want at basic training. You cannot sleep early at basic training, right? So that's just one of the things that is a little bit weird because you're just like, there's literally nothing to do. I've got an hour left until it's lights out. Why can't I just go to sleep now? Why can't we just go to sleep now and just give ourselves that extra hour of sleep because maybe you're exhausted from that day. Maybe you did a big ruck march or something, but it's just a little bit weird. It's a little bit surprising that literally if there's nothing for you to do that you can't just, you know, take a couple minutes of nap.
So that's it for this video. If any of you have anything else that maybe you've been to basic training before and you watch this video, you made it to the end, leave a comment down below of something possibly that surprised you. I'd love to hear what you would have to say. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, hit that like button. That would be awesome. If you want to stick around for some more videos, hit the subscribe button. That would be even better if you are not following me on Instagram and Snapchat. Social media links are right here. I hope you have an amazing day and I will see you later. Drop.